Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial video. In this video we are going to continue on a previous project that we started in a previous video. And if you haven't seen that yet, then make sure to watch it right there. Uh, there we go through how to set up Firebase, how to get that integrated with your Xcode project. So that is where we left off last time. And if you don't have that project that we're going to build upon right now, then just click uh, either a link in the description or I will annotate it somehow. And there I will have the download link to the project. But I would go through that video in order to make sure that you set it up properly. So now in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can write data to our database. So in the previous project, we just set it up now we're actually going to write some data to that database. So let's get right to it by opening up, uh, opening up our Xcode project. So here is our Xcode project that we left last time. And as you can see, there isn't anything special with it yet. Uh, there is a few tweaks here and there, but we have our view controller and we have our main storyboard. So really nothing new or spectacular there. But if we now go over to our uh, Firebase project uh, folder, if you just go to console.firebase.google.com, you can see your project. Let's see if I just click on it, then we can go through this together. You just click on Firefun, the project that we started last time. And then on the left side, you will have something called a database. So let's click on that one. And here is going to be our, this is our database. So our database is structured like a tree. We have parents and then we have childs of that parent. So if we now take a look at this, we could add uh, elements to our database right here, right now. So if, for example, we have a parent that's named name, and then we can add um, elements under that or childs of that parent. So now we have name, then we could have, um, for example, Sebastian. And here we could then have age, which is, let's say I'm 15. And then I could add, uh, add that, for example. So then we have, have a list of names. We would have the names and then the age of uh, the respective people. So I could then add another name, let's say Carl. And his age is 15. I could add that. And then maybe also we want to add some other information like uh, height, maybe he's 150, we can add that. And then also want to add that to Sebastian, which is 190. So let's click on add. And as you can see here, we have created our structure. We have our name. And then we under there, we have the, the different names. And then we have uh, given those name attributes like age and height. So this is how our database is going to be structured. Now we're only going to concern us with the first layer. So name, we're not going to make any childs to that um, entity, but we're just going to keep on adding there on the first layer. So if we now delete this, we are going to, let's just delete that. We are going to make our own uh, structure like that through our app. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to click on rules. Now here you can define who has the authority to read, who has the authority to write data to your database. Of course, if you're going to publish this, this is a good idea to just look a bit into and see how you tweak this around in order to limit it to certain people or only your application. Uh, but here we're just going to let everyone read and write. So we're going to say, remove this and we're simply going to say true. And we're also going to say true here. And then we're just going to publish that. And this is now going to allow us to read and write to this database. And we can just dismiss this error right there. So now we have our database all set up. We have uh, allowed ourselves to read and write to that database. And now we're going to enter our application and start uh, writing some data to this database. So what are we going to do? Well, I haven't thought that we are, or I imagined that we are going to make a sort of a to-do list. So what we're going to need is a text field. And I am just going to drag this in just like this. I'm just going to change this so that I don't launch, don't launch it in the iPhone 7 Plus. Let's see, there we have text field. And then we are going to need a button. 
So let's drag that in also. Now what our application is going to do is we're going to have that text field, we're going to have that button, and then when the user types something in and clicks that button, then we're going to send that, uh, that text string from the text field to our database. So let's connect these elements. And I'm just going to here, I'm going to say name this save. I'm going to save the elements. And then we're just going to drag them in. So control drag, and we're going to drag this one in. My text field. Let's see what I'm doing here. There we go, my text field. And then we're also going to drag in this lovely button here, which is going to get the name save btn, save button. And it's going to be an action and just connect that up. So here we are. Now we have a button that triggers a certain action, triggers a certain function, and we have our text field where our user can input some data. So how do we get that data that the user inputs and to our database? That's a question. And that we are going to accomplish by first of all importing Firebase. That's always the first step when you want to work with Firebase. Then the next step is going to be to establish some kind of reference to our database. And we do that by declaring a variable, which I'm going to name ref, like reference. And this is going to be a FIR database reference. And I'm just going to make it an optional for now. And then we're going to declare it or establish this reference the moment the user clicks on the button. I've tried to, um, uh, to declare the variable outside or instantly when the application launches. That has sometimes led to a small little error here and there. So just to make sure I'm, I'm waiting before I, I connect it up to the database or establish this reference. So I'm going to do it when the user clicks on save button. And then we are simply going to type in ref. So our, or first declare our reference. So our reference is FIR database dot database dot reference. So here we have declared our reference. We're now connected up to our database. And now we can start giving our database or shove some data into our data, <laughs> into our database. So the way we do this is we simply say ref. So our reference dot child and our path. Now this is like we did uh, an example a couple of minutes ago. We established a, a child that we named name. So right now we don't have any childs in our database. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to create a new one. And if it doesn't find the one that we are using here, it's just going to create it. So that's very awesome. You won't run into any problems there. So we're going to create a new child, which we are going to call list. And then I'm also going to say child by auto ID. Here we can assign a custom ID to uh, the element that we are creating now and passing to our database. But, but because we don't care about this right now, we're just going to give it an automatic uh, ID. And let's get some more space here so that we can also see a little bit better here. So we're, we have created, or we have said where we want to save this item. We have created a new ID for that item. And now we're going to set the value of that item. And the value of this item is, of course, going to be my text field dot text. And just to have a little check, we're just going to check if the user has actually entered something. So we're going to say if my text field the text is not equal to nil, which means the user has actually inputted something else. It could just spam that button and then we are going to save it to our database. So let's try this. Let's launch our application. And now we should be able to input a string, input some data. The user should be able to input a to-do list item. And then when the user clicks on that button, bam, it should send it to the database. So let's see if that is indeed the case. But before I go ahead and type anything in, there was a small little error that I made and we don't want to import Firebase. We want to import Firebase database because it's a database aspect of Firebase that we're working with. So if I now launch it, everything should be fine. So let's input a to-do list item. Let's say go for 
now I'm actually going to have an English keyboard. I, if it has Norwegian autocorrect, it just messes everything up. So let's see. I'm going to have English autocorrect. So there we go. Go for a 5K run. I'm going to save that. And then we have built in a delete function. We can do that. Well, we're actually going to do it right away. Just so we don't forget it. We're just going to say, uh, let's see, after we have created a new item, we're just going to say my text view dot text is equal to nil. So let's launch it again. And we can actually see while this is building if our new item is in our database. And as you can see, it indeed is. So here we have it. Here we have our first item list. And under this list, we have our specific to do list item, which is go for 5k run. So as you can see, when we create or when uh, this line here simply means that the new item that we're creating is going to go under the category list, which is as, which as you can see, it did do here with its ID right here. Oops, and then the specific item right here. So let's create a new one by five gallons of milk. And then we're also going to say uh, buy some tickets and make a tutorial. And we could go, we could go on and on. But if we now take a look at our database, all of the items that we just created is saved under uh, our list. So the list item and the or our list parent now has all of these childs, go for a 5k run, buy five gallons of milk, buy some tickets, make a tutorial. And this is how you write data to a Firebase database. Now in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we retrieve all of this. And we're actually going to retrieve it and then send it to a table view in our app. So constantly update our table view with new items that are being added. So if that is something you want to watch, then just Make sure to subscribe so that you stay tuned for future videos. And thank you for watching. And also, if you enjoyed this one, also make sure that to subscribe then. And then I will see you back in the next video.